not only for this week, uh, but also some prayer requests that uh, you are probably aware of, but just want to uh, make sure that uh, you add to your prayer list and, and, and so on and so forth. Good news this week, Pastor Jesse had a doctor's appointment. He is still normal, so we pray for him. <laughs> hey, hey, don't laugh at him. That hurts his feelings. Uh, his doctors are clear. His doctors are clear that he is, in fact, normal. And so we praise the Lord for... Uh, his work and his life and in his head, and uh, he has another appointment this week, and we trust that uh, that will go the same way, uh, but we thank the Lord for that. Uh, we, know, we know how uh, comforting it is when we pray for stuff like that and it is answered in such a way. Uh, oftentimes, when we get the opposite news, we don't know how to deal with that, and so pray for Rita. Uh, she went in to have surgery this week. The cancer has metastasized. They couldn't do surgery. She was given a year to two years of, of a, of a diagnosis. And so just pray for her. Send her a card. Let her know that you're thinking of her. Certainly not uh, the answers that we've been praying for or wanted to hear when we, we contacted her this week. Pray for the families of Baraboo. There were students that died uh, this week in a car accident. Uh, I'll be part of a group that does some grief counseling at the high school this afternoon. Uh, how do you answer those type of questions? Uh, and we, we, we don't know how to, right? Um, so pray for those families and, and the school as they work through that process. And, and what a tragic loss. It's always a loss, regardless of, of the age or the circumstances. But be in prayer for, for those families. If you have prayer requests that you'd like to have added to the prayer list, please email those to the church. We want to make sure that we can pass those on to us as a congregation to be praying for. Are there things that need to be shared this morning? Dan and Carol are doing COVID. They're both vaccinated completely and they still have COVID. Right. And their granddaughter, is where they got from, they think, and she has COVID and it brought on more seizures, which was another problem. But yeah. well, anyway. Thank you for sharing. Dan and we be in prayer for Dan and Carol. Let's pray. And then we'll do some more some announcements. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. Lord, we, we, we lift up Rita. Lord, we lift up others that we know are in, in need of your healing. We, we lift up Rita, Lord, the, the, the encouragement that she has been to us and is to us, Lord, and yet the, the disappointing news that she received this week. Lord, help us to support her. Help us to be an encouragement to her. Help us to, 
to, to come alongside her in the midst of unanswered prayers. Not, not the answer of prayers that we want. Lord, for the families in town that have lost their children, may you provide opportunities for us to comfort them. Lord, and there's myriads of ways that we can do that, but we know it needs to be uh, active and intentional. So help us to find ways. Lord, we praise you for the answers of, uh, of prayer in Jesse's life and his continued good health. Lord, we, we praise you for another day of life and the ability to get up and join together in church. Help us to remember those things when, when things don't go well. Oh Lord, we pray for Dan and Carol as they deal with the issues of COVID. Having done what they needed to in regards to being vaccinated, but still fighting, uh, fighting the disease anyways. Lord, for their granddaughter. The illness has had other complications to ongoing complications. Be with her. Lord, we think of Jerry and we ask for healing for his health. We think of Dawn and ask for healing in her life. Pray for Sean, his eyes, for Pam and her eyes. Lord, opportunities to, to come before you knowing that you are in control, knowing that you are able, knowing that we can rest in your care. Lord, we do that this morning. Meet with us as we come to meet with you. We pray these things in your name. Amen. Uh, in, in your bulletin this morning, you'll find a handout for Christmas in October. Uh, there's information there in regards to all that that has to do with ACGC. There'll be an opportunity to take up a fifth Sunday offering this week that will be going to Christmas in October. This week, there's opportunities to gather together Tuesday uh, morning, 8 o'clock, at the log cabin, we'll have breakfast fellowship. Wednesday at 6, we'll have a meal huddle, so come and have supper with us this Wednesday from 6 to 7. 7.15 is a board meeting. Friday, 9.30, there's prayer time here. Friday at 5, I'm taking off with, our, with uh, Henry from the youth group. We're heading down to Aurora for Friends Forever. Be in prayer for us as we travel and for all that will be down at Friends Forever. Uh, and what else do we have? Coming up on the 20th, there's a missions garage sale. Uh, and so be, be prepared for that. Um, monthly memory verse, we're going to hit that in a second. New life prayer list is an announcement. How to get a hold of the staff here at the church. How to give online. That's how I see the announcements there in the bulletin. If you need an announcement, put in the bulletin or the newsletter. Please email that to the, to the church. New Life Baraboo at Gmail. We'll make sure that those get added to the slides, the announcements, the newsletters, and all that fun stuff. Mr. Bob, is it possible to have a monthly memory verse this morning? Sorry to make you jump like that. <laughs> Our monthly memory verse is the last day. It's the last day of uh, October, but uh, let's read this together if you would. When I am afraid, I will trust in you. In God, whose word I praise, in God I trust, I will not be afraid. What can mortal man do to me? Psalm 56, <clears throat> verses 3 and 4. Let's, uh, let's sing together. Would you stand? We're going to sing hymn number 438. We have come into his house. <laughs>
grab your Bibles, open them to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. First Corinthians chapter 14, starting in verse 26. If you're using the Black Bibles and you haven't found it yet, it's on page 814. Chapter 14, starting in verse 26. What then shall we say, brothers? When you come together, everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. If anyone speaks in tongues, two at the most three should speak, one at a time, and someone must interpret. If there's no interpretation, the speaker should keep quiet in the church and speak to himself and God. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes from someone who is sitting down, the first speaker should stop. But you can all prophesy in turn, so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. The spirit of prophets are subject to the control of the prophets. For God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. As in all the congregations and of all the saints, women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. If they want to inquire about something, they should ask their own husbands at home. For it is disgraceful for a woman to speak in the church. Did the word of God originate with you? Are you the only people it has reached? If anybody thinks he is a prophet or spiritually gifted, let him acknowledge that what I am writing to you is the Lord's command. If he ignores this, he himself will be ignored. Therefore, my brothers, be eager to prophesy. And do not forbid speaking in tongues, but everything should be done in a fitting and an orderly way. 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verses 26 through 40. At this point, our ushers are prepared to take up this morning's tithes and offerings. Sheila's volleyball girls won their sectional and they will be going on to state, so, which is great news. Um, but we're missing her this morning. A lot of times with the piano, we feel emboldened to sing a little louder. Some of us because it covers us up, others because it sort of undergirds the, the melody that we need to be singing. Today, we're stuck with one quiet little guitar, so I'm gonna ask you to be emboldened anyway and really sing out with us as unto the Lord. Please stand with us.
opportunity to seek you and to find you because we know that you are close at hand and we are whenever we call on you you are to be found and whenever we gather and with two or more of us you are right here in our midst and we thank you for that and we praise you help us to turn our eyes and our hearts to you during this time and let your words sink into our hearts in jesus name we pray amen thanks be seated uh, I was told that Bob Dessauer needs to come up. Thank you, Bob, for turning me up nice and loud. Uh, Bob, if you will come up. Sherry and Jed, do not go too far. Our Tracy and Jed, and Sherry, too. Jesse and Jed and the families to come up. You are in trouble. You're always in trouble. <laughs> we just want to thank our pastors for this past year and the coming year. 
that they've, uh, we appreciate what they've done all year and appreciate the future that they bring us and the uh, shepherding that they do. So here's Jet. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Jesse? <laughs> and we do appreciate our pastors for the month of October. Thank you. Yeah. Jen and Tracy had their Tracy's dad come and pick them up, so it's a special day for them too as they get to spend some time with their grandfather. Before we move into the message and dismiss the kids, let's go to the Lord one more time and pray. Let's pray together. Father God, we are thankful for your family, Lord, and this is a time for us to gather with your family, with other believers, with our brothers and our sisters in Christ. And Lord, as we gather together, help us to realize that these brothers and sisters, these other believers, these people that are part of our local church, our local congregation, really our local family, are people that we care about, people that we know, whose lives we pray for, whose uh, troubles we, we ask them about, but whose joys we celebrate that, with them too. And so, Lord, we're, we're thankful for that. But, Lord, even as we gather here today and, and we get to see each other and, and, and talk and share, really this morning is all about you. Lord, we have preferences. We have songs we like to sing. We have times we like to commit to. We, we have certain messages we like to hear. But Lord, in all of these, help us to hear you. Help us to be sensitive to your spirit. Help us not only to hear, but to respond and to reflect on what you're saying. Lord, that you may continue to draw us close to you that we might walk with you if we haven't started that yet. And Lord, as we walk with you, that you might continue to change us. That we might become more and more like your son, Jesus. Lord, help us with all of those things. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point in time, the children are dismissed to Children's Church. I want to thank you all for coming today, and uh, as you know, we have been speaking about worship uh, throughout the last several weeks, and really the theme has been, what does worship look like, not on Sunday morning, but in your life? You know, how is God changing us? How are we elevating him? How are we lifting him up? How are we making sure people see that he is important to us? And that's what we've been really focusing on over this last several weeks. Really, we started in 1 Corinthians, I think it was 11. And then we've looked at several other passages as we've asked that question. Well, today it's a little bit different. Today we are talking about not worship look, what worship looks like outside in our lives, but what worship looks like here. What does worship look like when we gather together? What does worship look like when we come on Sunday morning from 10 to 11-ish? What does it look like? And I, I want to start out by asking this question. Bob, this is the, the first slide. 
in the worship service, which one of these two is more important? Neither. Both. The speaker, I know he's more important. <laughs> okay? Both. God is the most important. Let's put him first. I get it. Okay, I knew someone, a few people would say that, including myself. Out of these two, the speaker, whoever it is, or the listener, which is most important? Don't answer because I am going to have you raise your hand. How many of you think the speaker is more important? Come on. <laughs> you just gave me a nice car. Bob said happy November or happy October. This month, yeah. This month. Yeah. We're thankful this month. Yeah, for this month. Okay, how many of you think that the listener is more important? Absolutely. That's really what this message is about. What does uh, what do I do as a listener during the worship service? While people are up here leading me in song, while people are up here praying, while people are up here playing uh, the piano or musical instruments or giving announcements or speaking, whatever the case may be, how am I prepared to listen not to what they are doing, but what God is doing through them. That's really what worship is, to say, God, I am here for you, and how am I hearing about you, from you, to be changed by you during that time? And I know that we all have preferences. Many of you have told me your preferences. I have preferences, too. I have a preference to the Bible I read. I have a preference to the songs I sing. I have a preference to how I hear messages presented. I have lots of preferences. And all of us who have preferences, a lot of times they're different. And that's okay. What's not okay is when I hear this. I went to a church and I stopped going there because I'm not getting anything out of the message. That almost like sounds like they think the speaker is more important. Not that any of you have ever said that. I've never said that. I am the speaker. I've had people tell me that. I'm not getting anything out of the message. If you ever think that, or someone says that to you, maybe you don't tell them, but you can think it. For yourself, say, you know what? Maybe it's not the speaker. Maybe it's the listener. Maybe it's the person who's sitting, and Lord, how am I hearing you? Lord, prepare my heart to hear. Now, it's different if you say, I'm here to hear the Lord, and they're not talking about him. I'm there to hear about the word, and they're not using the word. That's different. We're going to talk about that this morning. But how am I hearing you when I am here? And, and so even as a listener, it's really important when you talk about who's involved in the service, believe me, you all, as listeners, are the most important. Because you're the ones who are receiving messages. Not that speakers don't, because we do. You know, I hear as people are leading us in worship. I hear, even through scripture reading, even though I might have read that passage several times before the message. I hear as other people are praying. And that is an encouragement to me, not only to hear them praying, but what they pray about, how they pray, how they seek God. It's really important for us to be ready to hear what God is saying to me. And again, it's not so much just for 
me as a listener, but how you might be a benefit to others around you. How you're helping them listen. How you're helping them hear a message not only from up here, but from the people next to them. So how can I, and this is the point of the message today, how can I bring my best to God in worship, but also do that for the benefit of others? It's not just me worshiping and forget about all the other people. It's us. As followers of Christ, worshiping together. And we do this together. And so how can I bring my best to God as I give him my heart and think, boy, I want this to be great for everyone else around me too. So with that in mind, let's, let's look a little closer at our passage this morning. It's in 1 Corinthians 14. If you don't already have it open, you can open up your Bibles to there. Uh, obviously, as you know, I skip around to different Bible ver uh, verses, but... The first thing that I want to say is about verse 29. And yes, we read 14 verses. There's a lot of truths there. And men, there's one verse in particular I want you to be aware of. We're not going to hit on this. I'm just talking about it right now. There's a verse there about women not talking in church and then going home and doing what? Asking someone. Who? Their husbands. Husband, why is it important for you to listen in church? You have to explain what you've heard in church to other people. It's our responsibility. We can talk about what women should or shouldn't do. Let's talk about what men should do. That's really important. So all of us need to be paying, listening attention intentionally. But that's not verse 29, or verse uh, 26, rather. Verse 26, it says this. What shall we say, brothers? When you come together together, Everyone has a hymn or a word of instruction, a revelation, a tongue, or an interpretation. All of these must be done for the strengthening of the church. What would you think when you came in in the morning and I said, hey, what's the hymn that you brought? Hey, what's the word of instruction that you brought, Mike? Uh, what's the revelation that you have, Amanda? It really then puts a little bit of pressure on us to say, you know what, God might have something for me to share today. But why are all those supposed to be done? To lift up you? To make you sound good? No, I need to say and to share Something that's useful to others. Something that benefits others. Uh, something that builds up. Something that encourages others. That this church is strengthened. First of all, it says that we should come together. When you come together. Not if. Not do you come together, but... When you come together, when you gather together, when you experience fellowship with others, when you're worshiping together as a body, as believers, as brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes I hear people talking about this, they say, yeah, I can worship anywhere. That's exactly right. You can worship anywhere. You can worship here, or you can worship in your car. You can worship at work. You can worship out in the wilderness. You can worship anywhere you want. You can worship at home. You can worship at home while you're watching this service. That's great. 
But it also says, when you gather together. We have been uh, experiencing uh, a big increases in churches being able to broadcast their services over the last year and a half. We previously would record, record our services and then put them online after the service. Sometimes it took two weeks to do that, maybe three. We had the service, it just didn't get online right away. But now, instantaneously, you can watch the service, be at home or wherever, and, and hear what's going on in the service, which is great and convenient. There's a problem there. No offense. I'm speaking to the camera. <laughs> the problem is, you don't get the relationships that you experience in fellowship. You don't get the strengthening from one another. You don't get the encouragement from other people asking how you are. And likewise, you don't get to do that. Sometimes we have things that come up, yes. But we need to make sure that we are worshiping together for the benefit, not just of me, but of others. That's why it's important to come and listen. So that I can be strengthened, so that I can strengthen others. See, if we're really going to love others as we love ourselves, then that means we have to think about ways to build them up and encourage them. You know, one of the things that really, really bothers me, some of you have told this, now I'm telling all of you this, is when people have bad things to say about other people. When people say things that tear other people down. How many of you have faults? <laughs> All of us have faults. Let's just be honest about that. We might not like them. We might not share them. But we all have faults. You know what God says when he sees our faults? I love you anyway. I love you anyway. I care about you. I want to forgive you. I want you to walk with me. Come along with me. Not, I don't want to be around this person. Not, this person's, excuse my language, a jerk. Not this person because they really don't care about anyone else. Believe me, I want to say that too. And it's really easy to do that. But if we're going to build and strengthen up people, we have to ask God, change my heart so I can think about people like you do. Change my heart so I can love people, which is the seventh or second greatest commandment. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Jesus said that. But the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. See, if we're really going to love each other, then we have to learn not to talk bad about them, not to use language that's questionable, but rather say things that are encouragement to others. Look at this verse, verse from Ephesians. Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus in chapter 4, verse 29. It says this. Don't let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth. But only what is helpful for building others up according to their needs, that it may benefit those who listen. Any of you ever get your mouth washed out with soap as a child? <laughs> Raise your hand higher. I want to see it. I got my mouth uh, washed out with soap when I was a child. It's awful. Yeah. My brother did it. I didn't know what I said to him, but obviously it wasn't good. <laughs> On 
wholesome talk. How many of you had a parent or an adult say to you, don't talk like that? <laughs> now, sometimes we don't say that to our kids. Sometimes we do. God is telling us, don't talk like that. Only talk in a way that benefits others. Only think about what can build them up. Not what can tear them down. Don't, don't let it come out of your mouth. Think about what's useful for them. Romans 14, 19, it says this. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and mutual edification. Read that one with me again. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. The word edification, if you don't know what it means, is I want to edify you. I want to give you something that's nutritious for you. I want to ha have you hear something that encourages you. Think about what could encourage someone as I say it to them. And that doesn't mean we can't correct someone. That doesn't mean we say, you know, something's going on here and it doesn't <coughs> seem good. How can I help you with that? Because right now you're not really helping anyone. Whether it's at work or a friend of yours, whoever that is. But we have to make an effort to do that to something that leads to peace, but also is mutually edifying. This is that same principle that we just read about in Ephesians. Doing our best effort to bring peace, not division or distraction or hurt. Do you think we ever say anything in church that hurts someone? I don't mean during the service. I mean before and after the service. I want to ask a question about our current president, and I also want to ask a, a question about our previous president. But I'm not going to. You know what the Bible says about our leaders? Pray for them. I would never seek to be president. It's a hard job. And it's not just the opinions of the people in your country. The president of the United States gets to have conversations with other leaders throughout the entire world. A lot of things weigh on him, even though he's not the one that makes the decisions in our country. Which is kind of funny, because we blame them for everything. Yeah, yeah. Or praise them for what happens while they're in office. But they have a lot of people's ears. We have to make sure, not only when we talk about presidents, but we talk about other people. So, you know, I'm praying for them. That's got to be hard for what they deal with. People with eye issues, like Sean. Jed mentioned his hand. You know who else we need to pray with that's going to have eye surgery coming up? Traded on both of his eyes. This week? Friday. Both. How old is he? Twelve? I can tell you how Sean feels about needles going in his eyes. He's told me. I know how I would feel. Now you have a twelve-year-old having operations on both of his eyes. Pray for him. Pray for Rita. We already heard about her news. How awful. We need to pray for them and encourage them. I want you to think about this when it comes to saying and sharing what's useful. Not just here, too, by the way. Because sometimes we go 
out through the doors into our cars and church is over. The worship service is, is finally over. Not that you're saying that about me, of course. It's everybody else that went on during the service, not me. You're finally over, you're doing whatever it is, you're watching uh, the Packers or, you know, just having a good time and things come out of your mouth. I want you to say, think about this. If I were a child, would I be corrected by an adult? What they say, watch what you say. I'm going to be corrected by someone and say, watch what you say. When I speak to others, is what I say helpful and encouraging to them? Versus saying or doing things that aren't done in love. I want to be and share what's useful and benefiting to others. That's what we need to do as we come into worship. Second point is this. I used all my time on the first point. I need to approach worship with ears ready to listen. There's a couple of words I want you to pay attention here. Others and everyone in verses 29 through 31. Others and everyone. Verses 29 through 31. Two or three prophets should speak, and the others should weigh carefully what is said. And if a revelation comes to someone who's sitting down, the first speaker should stop. For you can all prophesy in turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. Others in the first verse, everyone in the last verse, verse 29 and 31. Who are others? Who are others? Everyone but me. Everyone but you? Everyone who's here. Everyone who's here. Anyone else have a different answer? I want to say is everyone but the prophet who's speaking. Now, I don't think I have the gift of prophecy, but I have the stage, quote unquote, right now. Others are listeners. All the other listeners. Who is everyone? Verse 31. For all can prophesy and turn so that everyone may be instructed and encouraged. Who's everyone? Everyone. Everyone. So if I'm saying things that are unhelpful, is everyone going to be listening? Maybe not. If I'm doing things that are distracting, is everyone going to be listening? Maybe not. And it's hard to pay attention, I know. We watch things for three minutes online. And it's over. One minute sometime. I get it. It's going to make preaching hard in the next, from here on out. I really do feel like that. You know, how do we switch our gears to change the way we present truth? But when it comes to us at worship, I need to approach worship with ears ready to listen, ready to pay attention, ready to hear. That I can hear what I'm being instructed, instructed so that I can weigh carefully the truths that I'm hearing or the untruths. I've told you before, I'll tell you again for those of you that have come to the Get Connected class and become members, if you are not hearing truth in the church you're attending, find another church. If you ever determine that here you're not hearing the truth about God, the truth from the Word, find another church. And that comes for you to figure out what discernment is. We have to be listening, paying attention. 
I've got to jump ahead to Ecclesiastes 5.1. Guard your step when you go into the house of God. Go near to listen rather than to offer the sacrifice of a fool or of fools. James 5, it says this. It's actually James 1. Everybody should be slow to speak and quick to listen. You ever wonder, maybe you've heard this question before, why do people have two ears and one mouth rather than two mouths and one ear? Maybe we ought to listen twice as much as we talk. It's hard to listen. So am I listening so that I, I can hear truth? How am I listening so that I can weigh what I hear, so that I can say, here's what I've heard, and I just need to figure out if that's really truthful. By the way, how do you determine that? One, you look at the word. Like, I share words with you. Some of that is my opinion. And, and I don't mean to degrade pastors, <coughs> speakers, but the reality is I am just a person commenting on the Word of God. I'm just a commentator. A commentator is someone who reads the Word of God, explains what it is, and to me, a pastor also should be someone who helps people apply, put into practice what the Word says. So all I am is a commentary who's giving you truth. Saying, here's, and challenging you, here's how to apply it. But you, as an individual, have to figure, well, what does this mean in your life? And that's the part you play, and that's why it's important to listen. You want to know why I give you handouts every week? How many of you have a handout from a different message with you today? Some of you do. <laughs> and uh, I remember someone saying, can I get another notebook? I don't know if we put in, I know I didn't, because I made the handouts and I forgot to make. You've been forgetting to punch the holes for quite a while. Yeah, for quite a while. Thank you. It's true. <laughs> you haven't punched the holes. You know why we punch the holes? Because we have three ring binders that we give to people. Like, soon after I got here, Pam said, you know, it might be a good idea if we get three ring binders, and she bought us some. We still have some, I think. Yeah, that was 13 years ago. Some people have filled up their binder and asked for another one. The reason for something to take down your notes. You know what that does? Is it helps you pay attention. Mm -hmm. But it helps you remember what you're hearing. How many of you say, I need to write that down? Not when you're up here, of course. Not when you're here, of course. But when your wife says something. <laughs> or your spouse. Or your boss. And you forget. I told you to write that down. <laughs> How many of you have heard that before? <laughs> That's why I give you note cards, handouts, so you don't forget. Not what I said. It had my points in there. But really, it's about what you're hearing. That's why there's space on the handout so you can say, here's what I'm hearing. And Lord, as I'm reflecting on this, let me write down some of my thoughts. And you keep them because it almost then becomes like a spiritual diary. Now some people keep them, and that's fine, just because. But as you're growing spiritually, you can look back and say, oh yeah, I remember this. Now I'm past that issue. Still comes up every now and then, but it's not quite like that. <laughs> so that's why I hand out those notes. So, but I need to approach worship with ears ready to listen. 
The last point is this. I need to take time to reflect on what I'm hearing and worship. I kind of already hit this. This is where discernment comes in. in verse 29, it says this. Two or three prophets should speak and others should weigh carefully what is said. Now, I don't know what it says in King James Version. That's what it says in the NIV Version. And to me, what that means is I'm hearing something and I need to determine if that is correct. Is that the correct way to preach on that passage? Is that the correct way to apply that passage? Is that the correct way to think about that passage? Is that even a passage? We hear this phrase, God will never give you more than you can handle. That's not biblical. It's not from the Bible. What's from the Bible is whatever God does give us, he helps us through. Is it similar to that? Yes. Sometimes we hear, well, God will bless me as I do good things. I never see that in the Bible. Who was the person who did the best things that lived in the world? Jesus. How did his life end? I'm just saying. Now he was raised from the dead. You know who else gets raised from the dead eventually? Every believer. That's what uh, the hope that we have. Does that mean we can live? Without health issues, that we can live without getting beat up. That's how Jesus, what happened to him before he died on the cross. Does that mean we won't be threatened? We won't go through issues? No. Of course not. So we have to really weigh what we're hearing. Is this true? kind of lost where I'm at now, but when it comes to people sharing God's word, sometimes we'll hear in one church, this is how you should think about a passage, then we'll hear in another church, no, that's the wrong way of thinking. Then we'll go to another church, and no, this is how you understand that verse. And really, then it gets into interpretations, and whose is right? I want to say me. But I'm not that foolish. What we do is we have to go to God and say, God, I, I'm a little confused here. I'm a little confused. Help me to really understand what you're saying in your word and, and to understand if, if what I'm hearing is right. 1 Thessalonians 5, it goes back to encouraging one, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. So not only are we hearing the word, but then we're taking time to reflect on what we're hearing so that not only does it build me up, but as I share it with others, it builds others up. And what if what I'm hearing is not encouraging, is not from the word, doesn't speak about God, doesn't elevate Him, you have to weigh that out. That's why the listener is so important in worship. And then he has to determine, well, let me first go to the leaders there and find out what's going on. And then maybe determine that, you know what, we need to go to another place. We've had people that have come to this church, praise the Lord, they've come to this church and they say, you know, where we're going, we weren't hearing the word of God. They looked at it as a, a book from 2,000 years ago that doesn't matter anymore. It's not authoritative. It's not practical. God didn't make the world, it happened six billion years ago. I don't see 
see that in Scripture? Do I know when the world started? Some people say 6,000 years ago. I don't know exactly when it was. What I do know is the Bible said that God made it. What the Bible says is God made Adam the first man, that God made Eve the first woman, and they spread out from them. I don't know all the details after that. But if we're going to say the Bible is true, then our truths have to come from there. They have to align with there. So if you're hearing something that says, well, you know, it's okay for me to do that because I'm closer to God than you, I would go to a different church. If someone's saying, well, you know what? I know what other churches say, but ours is right, and so we need you to be here. And if your family doesn't like it, if your friends don't like it, that's okay. We're cutting you off from your family and friends. They don't say that. You know what that's called? A cult. <laughs> it's called a cult. They might have a different name. If someone says, only be here, you can't go there, that's a cult. What did Jesus pray for in his disciples in John 17? Not that you would take them out of the world, but that you would protect them in the world, from the world, even though we're not of the world. What did he tell us in Matthew 28? This is the Great Commission, by the way. Go and make disciples. Share the truth. Just as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Jesus didn't cut himself off from the world. <coughs> Neither are we supposed to. Even if they don't believe. We have to determine if what we're hearing is truth. That's why we weigh it. We think about it. We reflect. Reflect on it. John 16, 13 says, When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. Who is Jesus talking about? God's Holy Spirit. Anybody that's a believer has God's Holy Spirit in them. Somebody has told me, Well, you're closer to God because you're a pastor. Believe me, you can ask my two closest relatives that are here today. I am sure I am not as spiritually mature as some of you. I said it out loud. There are times where I get things wrong. And what's unique about us, the Bible says that all of us are part of of the priesthood of Christ. That means you can be as close to God as anyone else. Because you have the Holy Spirit in you. You need discernment, ask Him. Ask Him. Spirit, give me discernment today. Help me to see if this is truth. Weighing the truth needs to be done not only by the listener, but also by the speaker. Otherwise, I am not sharing. That's what I do during the week. It's part of one of writing messages. Here's, Lord, is this what you want me to say? I told someone it takes me about 10 hours to write a message. It seems like a lot. When I was in seminary, the guy who was teaching us about preaching, he said, you should prepare for one hour each minute that you speak. Now, that was before we didn't have computers. And you had to pull down many books. So I understand why it would take an hour. Now you get it at your fingertips. The different things you need. That has cut down some time. But after time, you kind of get a sense of how God leads you. What's important as you're doing that, not just for the speaker, but also for the listener, do I know how to discern truth from do I know what's right? Do I know what's wrong? 
Do I know what comes from Scripture? What doesn't? Do I know that this is a personal opinion versus an opinion that's confirmed in Scripture, number one, through the Holy Spirit, number two, and then from other believers? I've heard people say, I don't believe that because that's what I didn't grow up with. Frankly, I don't care what you grew up with. I don't care if you go to Avon Christian Church and you don't believe our distinctives. That's okay. Again, what I do care about is do you believe in the core of Christianity? Who is Christ? What's the Bible mean to us today? Do you know that God loves you? Those are core things when it comes to walking with God. So we, we need to know how to discern truth for earth. And if what am I hearing and is what I'm hearing instructing me in God's way and encouraging me as I walk with Him? You know, sometimes we we look back in history, really in the 1700s, but not just in the 1700s. 1800s, 1900s, and even 2000s. Some preachers preach, quote, fiery sermons. Literally talking about the fires of hell. Repent or you're going to burn. That's true. But I want to know, how do I live today? What do I do today? How do I trust Christ today? What does he want me to do tomorrow? The next day. Where are the people that I work with? How can I love them? How can I share the good news about Jesus with them or the students that I see each day? See, it's that listener's discernment that helps us see the truth from error, that helps us to make sure what we're hearing is from God, that helps us to see if it's truth coming from God. And so when we come, we have to have our listening ears on. Maybe some of you heard that while you were children too. We have to come with this approach to say, I'm going to hear things today from God. We have to come with the approach that not only am I going to hear things from God, I'm also going to say and share things that are useful, even though I'm not coming up on stage. Because when I go from here, now I'm the speaker. You're the speaker to someone else as to what you heard today. Not just for me, but more importantly from the Lord. And to be able to say, Lord, as I bring my best to you here, now you can use me out there and in here in the foyer before or after the message to, to make sure it benefits others. That's what I want to challenge us with this morning. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we thank you for this time, Lord. And I know even though I cut some things off, I still went longer. I'm sorry. But Lord, when it comes to worship, Lord, I want to respect our time. But more importantly, I want to respect you. And Lord, help me to have listening ears on. Help me to hear you in the preparation. Lord, help me to have good discernment on me weighing what I hear, not just in the message, but in the song, in the prayer requests, in the praises, so that everything that is said, I understand it, whether it's truth or error whether it's from you or something else. And Lord, I want that not just for me, but for all people here. Lord, even as they pray, Lord, help them to hear you speaking each time they listen to a Christian speaker. Each time they turn on a Christian music station or a CD or a USB that has Christian music on it. 
Lord, that we may hear you, listen and weigh what's being said, so that as we hear it, we can then benefit others and build them up, strengthen them as brothers and sisters in Christ. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this point in time, we're going to skip the last hymn. What we're going to do instead is uh, we're going to finish by taking up a special offer. In your bulletin, there is a handout, and it says, Christmas in October. Some of you might be seeing this the very first time. You're like, what is this? Today is Halloween. How can it be Christmas? <laughs> I'm going to ask Pam if she'll come up and share a little bit about this.
Sorry about that music there. Got to the end of one song, we had silence, and then the next song started. I said that was going to be the end of the service. What I'd like you to do is stand up as I pray for us as we go out. Father God, we are very grateful that we have come into your house, that we've heard from you, at the very least, in your word, but also through song, through hearing people speak, through understanding what missionaries do as they share your word, bring people into your kingdom, and, and help them to grow in their relationship with you, that they might continue to do that in their local culture. Lord, help us to be a blessing to those missionaries, those pastors, those people around the world as we give to them. But Lord, help us to be a blessing to the people who sit next to us here in our church. The people we talk with as we go out of the, the church, as we talk with people in our car, with people in the store, with people at work, people at home, our friends. Lord, that they too may receive a blessing that we've received from you. Lord, help us to be people that give our best to you, but also benefit others. May that be what's said about us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for coming today.